Beginner Chatterbaits, part two. Hey, if you're brand new to bass fishing, or just getting back to it after a long time away, or just looking for some tips, tricks, reviews, how-tos, the occasional unboxing, and lots and lots of bass fishing, welcome to Fishing with Gramps, presented by American Legacy Fishing Company, right here on YouTube. This is part two in our beginner chatterbait series. If you haven't seen part one yet, I'll link that up here, as well as in the description below. In part one, we discussed the basic chatterbait, the Chatterbait Elite, and the Z-Man Jackhammer. We also talked about various rod, reels, and line combos, and how to fish the Chatterbait. In this video, we're gonna go a little more in depth. We're gonna talk about some basic colors of Chatterbaits, and when to fish them, and some of the basic trailers. We're gonna talk about what bait our Chatterbait's gonna mimic, lake conditions, and weather conditions, to give you the best shot at catching a good largemouth bass. There's nothing better than the Z-Man Jackhammer. Nothing. Thank you. Now there's three different food sources for largemouth bass that I like to imitate with a chatterbait. A shad, a bluegill, and a crawfish. So first up we're gonna start by trying to imitate a shad. Gizzer shad, threadfin shad, may just depend on what's in your area. <laughs> now while I'm no Bill Dance, there are several things that he always brings up at the beginning of his shows that you need to keep in mind when you're out fishing. And a lot of those are weather, like is it sunny or is it cloudy out? and conditions. Is the water stained or is it clear? So there's a few things you need to keep in mind when you get to your fishing spot. So now when we're imitating shad, it's generally a mostly white fish with a little gray along the top and that's what we want to kind of mimic to try to trick the largemouth bass, which you know necessitates a white chatterbait. Now before we jump down the rabbit hole, there are literally probably 12 different types of chatterbaits and each one of those styles of chatterbaits probably has another dozen or so colors that come with it we're keeping this simple we're going to keep this basic as you progress in your chatterbait skills and you start learning to mix and match and pair up your various trailers with your chatterbaits you'll find that you're going to have a tackle box full of all kinds of different colors of chatterbaits and even more options for trailers this video we're going to keep it pretty simple now when we first get to the honey hole we need to assess our current situation if we if we think the place has shad in it got a few things we need to look at is the water clear or is the water stained a little bit what's the overhead weather look like is it sunny or is it cloudy now down in the description below i'm going to lay out what trailers and chatterbaits i like to use for each of those conditions and i'm going to list all that so that you can have some show notes so to speak so that you have an idea how i set these up based on water clarity and the weather itself so now i've grabbed my white either chatterbait or jackhammer to mimic that thread fin or gizzard shad now what trailer do I want to put on it? I've generally found if it's sunny out in pretty clear water, I want a trailer like this Yamamoto Zeiko with a little bit of glitter on it. As you can see when I zoom in there, it's got some sparkles on the top of that. Now if you want to keep this at its absolute easiest and just go after shad, you can start with this white Yamamoto Zeiko and throw it on there. Or if you like the Z-Man Elaztec, you can throw on a little diesel minnows like this. Now I really like the Z-Man stuff, but one of the things that you have to keep in mind about these things is you have to store them in the package they came with. This Elaztec, which is this material that lets this get real stretchy, does not play well with other soft plastics. If you put this in your box with other soft plastics, this thing's gonna look like you stuck it in a microwave after about you know two minutes. It's just gonna melt away. But as you can see, if you put this little diesel minnows on the back, it basically will mimic a nice little shad. Now, if we wanna get a little more advanced, I have two Gary Yamamoto Zaccos, and I really, really love these on a chatterbait. Now, if it's cloudy out, I want something a little more subdued, so I'll generally go with this plain white. But if it's sunny out and the water is pretty clear, I like this Zeko with the sparkles on it. It's a little more translucent. It's kind of a little more realistic because if the sun's beating down through the water and actually bouncing off of the bait fish under the water, they may reflect a little more and show that. Whereas if it's cloudy out, the fish will be a little more subdued, just like this plain white Zeko. So clearer water, sunny out, a little more bling. Cloudy out, something a little more subdued. So for our shad imitating chatterbait and jackhammer, most of the shad are white with maybe gray on the tops. And you can see on the jackhammer how it transitions from the white bottom up to gray on the head. Whereas the regular chatterbait, just, you know, pure white. Are the fish gonna target on that? 
I don't know, maybe. That may be why the guys who fish a lot of tournaments jump up to the jackhammer versus the chatterbait. Painted heads, two-toned skirts, and eyes on the jackhammer. That may just be what makes a little bit of a difference. Now, I won't lie, when I'm fishing tournaments, I'm throwing a jackhammer. So let me cover real quick the trailers that I use mostly fishing tournaments with these white chatterbaits. So like I said, depending on the sun, I'll either use the matte or the one with a little more bling. And a lot of times it's trial and error trying to match up with what the fish want. I'll switch out trailers if I see them chasing shad actively, but they're not hitting my jackhammer. Now, like I did with the Zakos, I've got one with a little more bling and I got one that's a little more subdued. These are the six cents flush. And then sometimes for something just a little bit different, I will take this Rage Menace and put it on sideways so that the two tails flap behind it like a fish. So I will rig it this way instead of this way like a crawl. Sometimes just those little changes make all the difference in the world. Now if the water's a little stained, the sun's not gonna make that much of a difference because it's just gonna basically reflect light onto whatever color the water already is. So you want something that contrasts a little bit. You want something that's gonna stand out a little bit from, you know, like that Mama Starbucks color in the water. So you're gonna want something with a little white chartreuse or maybe something like this two-toned chartreuse and green pumpkin or even something like this white and green pumpkin two-toned something when that's in the water like this and doing the shimmy like it's going to do it on the back of the jackhammer gives the bass something to focus on in that slightly stained water so that's kind of our shad setup whether it's stained clear cloudy or sunny and when we go to start targeting bodies of water that have bluegill in them if you're just using a regular chatterbait green pumpkin is a good option and green pumpkin with this green pumpkin and white zako is a good combination just gives it kind of that green color and again the two-tone for contrast now if you want to step up your game a little bit one of my favorite trailers in super clear water with this regular four dollar chatterbait are these six cents flush but paired up with that green pumpkin and that bluegill color flush oh it's gorgeous now if you want to step your game up just a little bit more and spend a couple of dollars more on a chatterbait get the chatterbait elite in bluegill color for like six or seven bucks and as you can see that's got a painted head a lot more colors in it than just the green pumpkin it's hand tied it's got a little bit bigger hook i'm just going to hold these up together but look how great those pair up together this is an amazing combination and if you go up to the jackhammer and the b height bluegill look how well those colors match together oh yeah but if you've got a little stain to the water but this gill dust matches up perfectly with this b height delight and again it just depends on what your budget is you've got the regular chatterbait for four dollars the Chatterbait Elite for $6, and then the Jackhammer that comes in around $13 in most places. Now, a little insider tip for you. One of the things I do if the water's super clear is I will take a Sharpie and hit these gold blades and paint them black. Now, generally, I will throw these six cents flush later in the season when the bluegill are a little bigger, but early in the season, I'll throw those green pumpkin Zakos on the back of these. All right, so now we've covered Shad. And we've covered bluegill. Now this next color is what I go to when the water is super, super stained. And I mean that kind of orange tannish tint. Whereas if it just rained and all the, all the dirt and the mud have been run in from the creeks and the banks and that water is just super tinged. That's when I will go to something completely different, the black and the blue. If that water looks like your mom's Starbucks with all the cream and whatnot in it, it's just super, super tan. You want something that's going to contrast when the sun's beating down on it. This almost looks like a shadow in the water but it gives them something to target. All right, so now we've covered shad, we've covered bluegill. What's the third thing bass love to eat? That's right, crawfish. This is when I come back to my green pumpkin chatterbait and throw something like this X-Zone adrenaline crawl on the back as a, with the, as a crawl trailer. Now this one, I'm not throwing around wood. I don't throw chatterbaits around wood, but we'll cover that topic in the next video. But clear water, I'm throwing the green pumpkin. Stained water, I'm throwing the black and blue chatterbait. And this one's got a chigger crawl on the back. So these are my two favorite options for throwing chatterbaits when mimicking a crawfish. With one exception. 
make sure you watch to the end of the video for that tip. Now another trailer I like on the back of the chatterbait to imitate a crawfish is this Z-Man Goat. And you can get these in green pumpkin, black, blue, you know, whatever color you like. All right, so now we've covered the shad, the bluegill, and the crawfish. All right, I've got two more tips for you. But before I get to them, if you found value in the video so far, do me a favor and hit that like button. It helps YouTube promote it to other people looking for content like this so we can get the word out and more people can learn. All right, tip number one. Every year, as the water hits 50 degrees for the first time, that's when those crawfish start coming out of their little winter hidey holes. Generally when they do, they have a little red tint to them. That's why you always see a lot of people early in the spring throwing those red and orange crankbaits, or in our case, the fire crawl chatterbait. Now these are really awesome. They're so popular that Gary Yamamoto came out with a fire crawl green pumpkin color to throw on the back. But if you want to imitate those crawfish got a couple of good options. Z-Man actually came out with their goat in a fire crawl, and these pair up perfectly. One of my other favorite baits is from Big Bite Baits, Flamethrower Crawl. Definitely need to order some more of these over the winter, get ready for springtime. Now early in the spring, when those crawfish emerge from their winter hidey holes, they're looking for love. Keep in mind, the water is still cold the fish are lethargic so fish slow this time of year bass are lazy eaters but they're still looking for food and they love crawfish fish parallel to the bank especially along riprap obviously if you're in a boat or a kayak you can position yourself to fish parallel to the bank but if you're fishing from the bank walk down to the water's edge and cast along either side of the bank coming along hit the rock hit the gravel hit the riprap bounce it doink 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 off of that stuff you might get lucky and catch you a bass looking for a good crawfish now my next tip can't believe i'm giving this away is one of my absolute favorite trailers for a chatterbait whether it's white or whether it's green pumpkin because it almost mimics everything and that is the z-man razor shads and the color well it's called the deal it's got blue, it's got green pumpkin, it's got white. It's got everything that can make the chatterbait look like whatever you want. And it's got the basic same hinge tail that the Yamamoto Zako does. And as you can see, I'm holding completely still on that tail. It's still going to town. But yep, this one is called the deal. It's got some sparkle in it, some white, some blue, some green pumpkin. It's got everything that looks like a shad or a bluegill. But probably my favorite one to throw it on is this Chatterbait Elite in the bluegill color and the deal. So drop me a comment down below. How much do you love throwing Chatterbait? What colors do you really love? What trailers do you find works best for you? Now be watching for part three as we start and get into the specialty chatterbaits. And remember, get outside when you can and make some memories. One cast at a time. Throw us some chatterbaits. Chatterbait. Love me some chatterbait. Woo woo chatterbait. God bless.